So on this episode of Washington Dishes, we're going to make some beautiful chana marsala, a really nice traditional curry dish. And to do that, the first thing we're going to need to do is make a spice paste. So it's time to head over to the stove. So for the spice mix, we have about a teaspoon each of cumin, coriander, and cardamom pods. We're going to turn on the stove and toast them in a dry pan. And to do that, we're just going to kind of let them sit and then swirl them every once in a while. And we really just need to let them go until they get fragrant. All right, that should be good. So our spices have cooled off a little bit and we're gonna add those to my mortar and pestle. I have this beautiful mortar and pestle that I found at the thrift store. You don't have to use a mortar and pestle. You could use a coffee grinder that you can usually find cheap at thrift stores and just use it for only spices. You don't want your coffee to taste like most of the spices you've ground. Maybe you do, I don't know. Anyway, so we're gonna add our spices and get those going. And once they are starting to paste up, we'll add some other ingredients. Once they've started to break up, go ahead and fish out the shells of the cardamom pods. So we've got our spices ground up. We're going to add a few things. The first is some cloves, about three cloves of garlic. And I'm just crushing them to get the peels off. Because we're going to crush them more in the, more, in the pestle. I'm going to cut this out when I do the editing. I've also got about an inch of ginger some pre-ground turmeric. You can get fresh, but it will stain anything it touches bright yellow. Used to be used for that historically to dye clothing. And I also have some pre-made uh, Kashmiri garam masala that I got uh, when I was up in Seattle at World Spice Merchants. They're a wonderful store. I'm sure you can find them online. Uh, they have a great selection. So we're going to go ahead and add those to our spice blend and get it all mixed up with a little bit of oil and then we'll start toasting our spices in the pan. So we'll add about a tablespoon of turmeric. About twice that much garam masala. Give that a stir to get it combined with our toasted spices and then we can start working in the wet ingredients. So first we're going to grate a bunch of ginger in. I keep this in the freezer so that it's easy to grate um, and it means you don't have to peel it as much. Although if there's a big chunk, if there's a big chunk you can just kind of tear it off. Get that in with all of the liquid and you can see it's starting to form a paste. So now we're going to add our garlic and continue mashing. We're going to add just a little bit of oil, about a tablespoon, just to kind of get it uh, loosened up. There we go. So now we're going to head over to the stove and start uh, to start toasting this in the pan that we're going to use for everything else. So this is mostly a one pan meal. Chana Marsala has two primary ingredients. Garbanzo beans or chickpeas in the rest of the world and tomatoes. We're going to use a mixture of fresh and canned because they'll provide different levels of tomato flavor. We'll also add them at different times in the recipe. And like most recipes, we need an onion. And the cilantro is mostly for garnish. We'll get to that at the end. So first, 
I like canned chickpeas. You can get fresh. They're a lot of work. So we're going to drain off the liquid, but reserve it for another use. This liquid is called aquafaba, and it's basically vegan egg whites. Can goes away. We'll do a quick dice on our onion. And this dice doesn't need to be particularly fine or even all that consistent. I'm going to try to get it as consistent as possible and fairly small because it'll cook faster and more evenly. But this is a dish that's going to cook for 40, 60 minutes. So if you've got some slightly bigger chunks of onion, it's not the end of the world. And we're using one medium-ish onion. If you like onion, you can add more. If I were doing this for a fancy dinner or fancy restaurant, I would do that brunoise, really tiny, fine cut that I talked about before. But we're just doing this for dinner tonight, so I'm going to go with just kind of a, a kind of regular small dice. We're going to go about a quarter inch apart, all the way across. And then another quarter, and then a quarter inch apart across the other way. Same thing with the other half, quarter inch through, and a quarter inch across. And we'll just pop these in a little bowl for now. And move on for our tomatoes. Pop the stems off in half. Cut out the stem. In half again. Cut out the other stem. Same thing for the other one. And so I'm going to do kind of a bigger dice on these. The tomatoes, canned tomatoes I got are kind of a smaller dice, but these are going to add a lot of freshness, so I want them to hold up. So we're going to add them very late in the cooking, and I'm going to have them in bigger chunks. All right, let's go ahead and get over to the stove. I've got a little bit of oil getting hot in a pan. Uh, I've got it over high heat. If you are not super confident, you can do this over lower heat. It'll just take a little bit longer. So as the, pan, as the oil comes up to temperature in the pan, I'm gonna add my spice mix and let that start to go. And what you'll see is as this heats up, the color of the spice mixture will bleed out into the oil. It should turn a really beautiful kind of pinky or a uh, yellowish orangish brown, kind of like a burnt sienna. And once this starts to get fragrant and my goodness, does it smell amazing in here? You'll see the liquid from the garlic and ginger start to cook out. And you want to let that go until those bubbles start to really die down. We can see around the edges the bubbles are starting to stack up on each other. So that means it, we're, we've got most of the moisture out and the spices are really starting to get toasty and delicious. 
We don't want them to burn though, so we're going to we're going to bring the temperature in the pan down by adding our onions. We're going to add a couple pinches of salt. And stir this around. And again, if you do this over lower heat, you don't have to be quite as worried about things burning. And we're looking for the onions to start to turn kind of translucent around the edges. All right, and if anything starts to stick, just kind of scrape at it, move the onions there and move them around. And it's just starting to get good. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to turn my heat down a little. And then the next thing we're going to do is add some tomato paste. I love this stuff in the tube because you can reseal it. And I'm going to use the rest of this tube, which is probably a little bit more than the tablespoon I need, but it's not enough to do anything else with otherwise. This is the other reason I like the tubes. You can kind of just crush them down and get everything out. So we're going to stir this around and, to, and let the tomato paste kind of toast in the oil. In fact, I think I want a little bit more oil in here. There we go. And now it's really smelling beautiful onion, spice, tomato flavors. Can't get enough of it. And then next up, we've got our canned diced tomatoes. And that's going to help us deglaze the pan and really let us scrape up all the bits that are stuck on the bottom of the pan. Uh, in fancy cooking terms, we call this either fond, which means like foundation, or sooks, which means stuck. Either way, they're delicious and you should try to get, scrape them off as best you can. And we're gonna now let, we're gonna let this go until it starts to get pretty dry and we get everything into a kind of uniform, uh, uniform paste. And after, once that happens, we're going to add some more water and the uh, chickpeas. All right, since I need about two cups of water and this 14.5 ounce can has to be rinsed out anyway before I recycle it, makes sense to me. So we'll give that a stir to get it together. And then we will add our drained chickpeas. Give that a nice stir. And as you can see, it's pretty liquidy right now. But we're going to add a little bit of pepper and let it cook for a good 20-30 minutes. And then we'll come back and check on it. We're going to bring this up to a boil over high heat, or a simmer over high heat. And once it hits that simmer, we're going to turn it down to medium, medium low. And just kind of let it go and simmer as it goes for, like I said, about 20-30 to 30 minutes. Um, keep an eye on it. If it starts to get really dry, add a little bit more water. Otherwise, it's kind of a let it go and just keep half an eye on it while you do other stuff recipe. So it's been about 30 minutes and you can see that our chana has cooked down quite a bit. It's much less liquidy. And the green, the garbanzo beans are nice and soft they squish easily so we want to let them go for another sorry we want to let them go for another probably 10 to 15 minutes so we're going to add most of our fresh tomatoes i'm going to save a few for later stir those in and i'm also going to give it a quick taste you never want to add salt to something that's going to reduce but i can get a kind of an idea of where we're at Alright, it's going to need some more salt, but I'll add that later. It also definitely needs another 10 minutes or so of cooking for everything to be the right texture. 
So we'll check back in once that's had a few minutes to cook through. It's been another 10 minutes and the moisture has cooked out of those tomatoes we added. So now we've got a good consistency. We've got a good consistency. So let's go ahead and give it a taste and do our final seasoning adjustment. It's very hot and it needs a little bit of salt. A little more pepper. Another little taste. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and plate this up. We've got everything ready. Let's plate it all up. We've got some uh, cilantro rice, which is just your basic steamed or boiled rice with some cilantro and oil and a little bit of oil mixed in. We'll get a nice base of that down and then we'll top it off with our chana. Whoops! And I like to leave just a little bit of the rice visible. Alright, next we'll add some of our uh, raw fresh tomato. And these will just add a really nice pop of bright red color and some nice brightness and flavor. I'm just going to scatter them around. And then this is some yogurt that I've added enough turmeric to to make it this color yellow and enough lime juice to to make it taste kind of like lime. And I'm going to do a quick little wipe here. And here. And here. And then I'm just going to drizzle that over. And then finally, some cilantro. Just a little sprinkle for some green on top. And here we have our beautiful chana marsala with cilantro rice, lime and turmeric yogurt sauce, and fresh tomato. This is kind of halfway between the most traditional way you could make it and the absolute quickest and easiest way you can make it. So you can leave out some of the fresh ingredients. You obviously don't need the sauce. If you think cilantro tastes like soap, you can just use parsley. Um, but this is regardless a really wonderful generally vegan hearty meal that can be an entire entree or just a side. I hope you'll try it out and have a wonderful rest of your time zone.